I just finished researching and copying the style of the 100 best comic book artists of the 80s and 90s, and here's what I learned. The option of what to draw I solved by selecting this group of iconic pictures from the 50s until the 90s. Then I started listing all my favorite childhood artists, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Bill Sienkiewicz, John Romita Jr., you know, the stars of the image era. I got to about 55 names, enough to start, and the rest came from suggestions from you guys, which was awesome, because I wouldn't have thought of doing Jim Steranko, Nick Carty, Alex Toth, and a whole group of manga artists as well. It fueled my love of old school comics even more. So let's do a review. I drew this Marilyn Monroe the least, I love the picture, but the first time I drew it, I realized that hand in the back doesn't look good when drawn in the same perspective. So I put it to the side to make the image clearer. If you're an artist, you know that when you look at a drawing the next day, you always find a ton of stuff wrong with it. So the stuff in red here, basically. I do really like the Steve Lea Aloha and Jack Kirby one. Steve is a really underappreciated artist, I think. Just check out his X-Men Annual 8. And I tried to keep this Walt Simonson angular but I think he does it even more, especially in those X-Men Inferno issues. Yeah, that fist on the hip arm should have been higher. Okay, the picture I did most was the Mark Wahlberg, aka Marky Mark, and Kate Moss Calvin Klein ad. It just screams 1990s to me, and it has brawn and beauty, so perfect for comics. In these versions, I stuck very close to the pose, just slight arm changes. I really like the first three, and the Roger Cruz one as well. But there's a lot of lemons in here too. Sal Buscema draws way prettier women. That banana hammock is way too high and small. And the Garcia Lopez looks flat, like a cardboard cutout, because the hatching is not in line with the shape. For the Dragon Ball one, I rushed the two-tone and it destroys it. I should have gotten some more reference like this one. So see where they drop the shadow, the separation lines and highlights. Yeah, that would have made it much better. Sometimes I deviated from the pose a bit for style effect, like this 50th episode René Ullebroek, favorite of mine. I spent maybe the most time on that video where I get into the history of Dutch comics. So here's a link if you want to check it out. The Jay Lee one looks good from far, but it has the same problem as the Garcia Lopez one in the heavy shadows. The shadows are not in line with the shape of the muscle. Like here in Jay Lee's stuff, even if he does it with straight lines, it still has a certain buildup, which gives it depth. Okay, quick break to appreciate the Jay Lee masterpiece. Nice. The painted ones? Yeah, kind of meh. Still a work in progress for me to get that painted look in Photoshop. But these last three I really like. And the Sylvester one might be my favorite of the whole series. Also because he's my favorite artist, so I know his style well. And the aging layer effects look good on this. Alrighty, let's go to Bruce. I was a huge Bruce Lee fan as a teen, and this was my favorite picture. So cool, that pose and the stare. But similar to the Marilyn Monroe one, that hand perspective in the back kind of ruined the first sketches each time. So I ended up changing the arms. On the Jim Lee one, I took the easy way out with the Havoc's black suit. But uh, oh well, it makes it look style accurate. The Matt Wagner Grendel was, was a surprise to me, how well the painting style worked. Yep, also again because of the big black. But from far it looks 100% like the real deal, right? The Ninja Turtle was easy because I had very similar reference. So I'm not gonna take too much credit for this. Simon Bisley and John Buscema are my lemons on this page. Same issue with getting the roundness in the muscles with the hatching. And on the Buscema one I also realized I need to study folds in pants. It's all about tension points, like the furthest shape beneath the cloth creates the lines. But okay, I should have gotten more reference. Lesson learned. I really like the Frank Whiteley one. Um, got that mouth pretty accurate. The coat could have had some more weight. Maybe the collar didn't need to be that stiff. And Hilary Barta is a way better master at exaggerating a pose to make it funny. Okay, next Audrey Hepburn, the queen of 1960s class. Fun pose to play with. The anatomy on the Steve Rude one was so tricky and I just struggled with it for hours. So <laughs> I want to forget about that one. But the Bruce Tim is spot on, I think. In animation, many people work on the same project, so they make a style easy to replicate. Yeah, the Mazzuccelli Catwoman's clothes are a bit too loose, and I think if she was skinnier, it would have been more realistic. Also should have dropped the boobs then, probably. And the Quesada one is a bit of a mystery to me, why it looks off. 
maybe the bottom leg or the top leg had to have more curve. Either way, it doesn't really ring the bell. I wish I spent a little more time cleaning up the Dan Frega one because he actually saw the video and commented. Fun fact, he wrote that he was drawing over Rob Liefeld's roughs, which is why his style was so similar to his. The rest of them are okay, I guess. If you are a retro guy, read those Chris Claremont and John Bolton classic X-Men stories. So good. Although Bolton wouldn't have made Jean's legs this big. Okay, next one I did a lot of is the James Dean motorcycle classic. This Kubert family series was a fun idea. Great leather texture practice on the brothers' versions. And I also did a lot of manga artists in this. The Pengus one worked really well, especially using that watercolor texture in the last coloring step. Akiman is in my hall of shame. I pray he doesn't see this, but I still hope to meet him here in Japan someday. So <laughs> I should have something better to show him by then. JR JR head way too big, one of my bad habits. The Will Eisner one worked very well, very happy with that one. On this pose, the fingers grabbing the handles were always tricky. There's so many ways to go with hands. I didn't really go for the James Dean fingers on the brake pinky up. I mainly drew them holding the handle. But then you have this hard foreshortened underarm and the top of the hand to deal with. Look how bad that looks in this JR JR. <laughs> And here I hit it with the brake. Mm. Anyway, good hand practice this one. And a very cute Calvin and Hobbes dad. Okay, Ben Madonna, the 80s Monroe. Looks like Frank Cho and Nick Cardi have pretty similar styles according to this. And these two MJs showed my lack of clothing folds again. Very tricky to let a piece of cloth drape over a woman's bust realistically. The lines on this carnage are too thick and that was something I was more careful with in later challenges. Checking the line thickness better on the reference. And there's not much wrong with this McFarlane, but I wish it looked better because he's the king and probably the most popular one in all of these 100 artists. Maybe more lines on the pillow? Mm, I don't know. I don't really have any favorites on this page, so let's move on to the beauties of TLC. Yup, picking these was an excuse for drawing butts and basically a ton of storms. The pose of TLC member left eye wasn't that fun to draw because of her hands being in the back, so it was mainly T-balls I used. And this one has to be my most embarrassing one, the John Cassidy one. Uh, I have no excuse. <laughs> I tried and failed. Eye proportions and dropping the light was so hard. Yeah. Adam Hughes one, on the other hand, looks really good and I think it gets the best butt award. And maybe my second favorite one in the whole series is Milo Manara. Instantly recognizable, I think, if you know Milo's work. By the way, check out that video for a history lesson on the female form. No to me, no to me, nudge nudge. Say no more! Rob Liefeld one was fun for obvious reasons, trying to nail that style. And the Watchmen background looks really good. Phase 2, but the body makes it look amateur. So kind of close on that one. Hair is also really tricky to draw, or better yet, I usually leave it till last and then I just want to finish and start coloring. So I rush the hair, which ruined the Paul Smith storm. I even cropped it here to save it a bit. Uh, Greg Land, not as easy as it sounds, tracing a photo. The George Perez one I was very happy with. It was one of the first ones I felt like was really style accurate. Some days I didn't feel like picking from the usual poses, so Salma Hayek and Sophia Loren made some guest appearances. That Bart Sears Brutes and Babes shine is very difficult. Jim Lee does it really well too. Also on this Electra I should have made a tighter underlying sketch, which would have helped with the anatomy. But this Dave Stevens is a thumbs up for me. I do now want to change that quad because having the quad peak higher looks better on Sophia Loren. Yeah, see, looks better. So that's it for the classic black and white picks. Some days I just drew what I wanted, like a Jim Lee redo in Keith Haring style, a Gil Kane cover with Spawn, Largo Winch with his buddy James Bond, a bunch of Spider-Mans, Wolverines, lots of Supermans, Storm again, Gambit, Batman, and some one-offs. Some lemons in here as well though. Unfortunately also for one of my other favorite artists, Rick Leonardi. Things looks good, but again with the hatching to create the depth. Yeah, it's that situation when you've been drawing for two hours and you don't want to start from scratch. Stubbornness, I guess. Some good drawings as well though. Let's see if you can spot which one I made. And this Fleischer Superman is probably one of my favorites too. So yeah, that's all 100 of them. Let me know which one your favorite is. I'd love to know why as well. And the biggest lessons I learned from this were 
don't rush a drawing because it'll suck. Better take a break and come back later than to finish it and start with another one. Use real life research. The pros do too, believe me. And the last lesson, comics were friggin' awesome in the 80s and 90s. And the people who made them were legends. Here's the playlist with all the videos. I'll be back with another project soon because this is so much fun. Like this video if you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.